Okay, so today we walked you guys through step by step on how to make a fly yes. Literally, it's foolproof. You can't, well, you can't mess it up, but don't mess it up. So if you've ever had dinner with me, you'd know that I don't really like dessert. I just don't have a sweet tooth, which you could say is a blessing. Now that said, there is that one dish that every Palestinian thinks about when thinking of Ramadan nights that I simply can't resist. Dripping with sweet syrup, deep fried with either gooey cheese or nuts on the inside. Yup, a life. Today on Turning Tables, Palestinian cooking with a twist, I'll be joined by the catastrophic cook herself, Noor Ajur. Truth be told, she was anything but catastrophic, and she even whipped up Atayev in three different ways. And proving that cooking is truly a family affair, her mothers and daughters were in on the action the whole time. The episode was as fun as it was funny, and I learned so much about the bond between Palestinian mothers and their daughters through the timeless sharing of recipes. And dare I say, we learned how to make the perfect Atayev. That slight crunch on the outside and cheesy greatness on the inside. The family joining in on the cooking was the sweetest addition to this episode, and right now, I think I'm going to have to go enjoy myself some of it. So enjoy the episode. What are we making today, and why is it an important dish for you? I'm just curious. So we're going to make atayef today. So this is something growing up that Mama used to make us in Ramadan. Um, this was like the favorite thing ever. I always used to wish that she'd make it at nighttime, because during the day when we were fasting and she'd make it, we couldn't eat from them. Where are you from in the States and like, where are you from uh, Palestine? Okay, so, um, Mama Liftawiya from Palestine, but she was born and raised in Amman. And then okay. my dad was born and raised in Ramallah. Um, yeah, so so you're making this dish and before you make it, I just want to ask your mom, is this complicated to make? No, actually, <laughs> no. No, it's not. <laughs> Honestly, it's not. So I'm going to actually prop this up under the camera so I can show you guys a live view of it. Okay, so let's make some wasaya. So over here I have some flour with a little bit of baking powder and sugar. I have some fine semolina, and then I have a little bit of yeast, and then I have some boiling water and some milk. So I'm actually gonna add some cold milk to the boiling water. So I have one and three quarter cups of boiling water, and then I'm gonna add three quarter cup of some cold milk. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it the perfect temperature that we need it. Um, and then what I'm gonna do, yes, Hedy. I'm gonna add this mixture to the blender. So you always wanna add your liquid ingredients first. This way, everything blends correctly and you don't get anything stuck at the bottom of your blender. So this is the perfect temperature. If you feel it, it's gonna be lukewarm. It's exactly what you want. Then I'm going to add my flour with my baking powder and my sugar to it. And then I'm going to add the semolina. And then I have a little bit of yeast. So just some active dry yeast. I'm gonna add this, I'm going to blend all of this and then we're gonna let it rest for 20 minutes. We let it sit for about 35 minutes. I'm actually gonna show you and then I'm gonna show them over here. So the batter has risen a little bit, it's bubbly, it's still a little bit thick. So we don't want it to be okay. thick. Um, and you'll know if your atayif is a good consistency from when you pour it on the griddles. But we know that this, first of all, it rose too much because the bubbles are too big in here. So it means that our batter rose too much. We need to deflate this batter a little bit. And it's really easy because we just have to blend it. And okay. also it needs more water because the bubbles, not only are they really big, there's not a lot of them. It's I love that you're troubleshooting at the beginning. It's like, this is the perfect cooking show for me because you're already anticipating all the mistakes I'm doing. Last year during Ramadan and it went viral on Facebook. Um, first of all, we have to add baking soda to it. We add the baking soda. Okay. Right we're gonna pour it. So I'm gonna sprinkle in some baking soda. Okay. Um, we can blend it together. And then I'm gonna add some boiling water to it. I'm probably just gonna add two to three tablespoons. I'm gonna take this to my blender and I'm gonna re-blend it again. Um, and that's gonna deflate the batter and mix the baking soda in. Because we want you today to be the the judge in the kitchen. I will. And I'm I will. <laughs> good, good. The heat is the most important thing for our life. There's Mom this. doesn't like to use a griddle. It I like to use a griddle. And I don't use a griddle. I don't yeah, it makes sense. I just want to say we need to do another segment to the producers called Multitasking Palestinian Mamas, and it should just be like the, the hottest show I on Netflix. Children, typically what I do is I use a quarter cup measuring cup 
for the normal acai. And then I use a tablespoon for the asafina. You know, it's called turning tables, Palestinian cooking with a twist. This is the best twist, just the family affair. It's like, oh here goodness. is how you make a thaya <laughs> while, while tending to all your children. Filling options. We have cheese. Um, I personally, everybody uses something a little bit different. I personally use a combination of sweet cheese and fresh mozzarella cheese. Nice. The cheese, you don't have to soak it. You don't have to get rid of any salt. Um, but it's not super stretchy, so we like to add some mozzarella because it makes it really stretchy. We're also going to do a little bit of atayi asafid, which we stuff with ishta. I personally make homemade ishta. My mom makes homemade ishta. It's not easy to make homemade ishta. It's a little yes, bit of a hassle. Easy. So you can just buy the pre-made ishta. I like to put it in the refrigerator because a lot of the ishta here in the States Liquidy. is not very solid. So I'm going to chop up the walnuts. We also do some with jars or walnuts. No, no, no. You want more? So I'm gonna actually chop up the walnuts. This, we mix in some sugar and some cinnamon with it. Okay, so we're just gonna chop this up. Some people, other people like the walnuts to be a little bit thicker. Um, I personally like it in between because if they're, too, they're gonna cut your atayaf when you stop. Yeah, them. yeah. I don't like when I get surprised with a big walnut piece, I'm gonna be honest. The first one. So, Whoa, you make it look so easy. I, I feel like I wouldn't even be able to get it symmetrical. Um, so that's the thing. If it has too much water, it's gonna like not hold its shape. It's gonna be like lopsided. It won't be round. You okay. can see all the bubbles. They started from the edges and just like mama was saying. And you'll get the bubbles almost immediately. If it's taking a minute to get bubbles, you know your atayah butter is not right. Let's see what the professional thinks. <laughs> now, this is a debate with everybody that I've seen make atayas. I'm going to ask mama what she thinks. Personally, when I make my atayas, I don't want this side to dry, the one with the bubbles, because you don't flip the atayas. If it dries, it won't stick when you try to seal it. Mm. However, I take my atayas off the griddle, it goes straight to a towel with the bubbles down. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how you get batter, like I said. The consistency of it is not watery. I have my measuring cup because we're going to make a little bit of a bigger atayah. So you want to pour it all in one time. Um, mm. don't have like rings on it. Yeah, you can see it. Like, it's it's it. It. If you have a round, round actually works better. Yeah. It was a more even leaf, a become medium heat. Got it. We just won't put them on the edges. We'll put them in the middle. So you guys I feel like if I tried to roll that, though, it would crumble. It's not going to crumble. Well, it's going to get really soft right now. So this one, the one I already took off, it's already soft. So you can see this one, it's bubbling beautifully right now. Like the, the bubbles are small. It's even. It's going from the outside in. Yeah, let's make one side. It's very, very tiny. And I'll give it to mom. Yeah, I see the one on the right. Looks like it's doing the, everything I'll perfectly. I'll give it to mama. You want to stay in the middle. So this is not something that you want to try to fill this as much as possible. Mm, mm. So don't fill it too much. The heat doesn't spread the correct way, and you're not get. They're not going to be even. But what is the exact right heat? Into so I have it at 375. Okay. I, every single time I do it, I do it at 375. I had to drop it a little bit today. I want to say it's about 360 right now. Okay. So as you're making them, you'll see, like, I saw this one. Okay, it's starting to brown a little too quickly. I don't want that. Well, so is that as medium? It. Yeah, so who medium heat? It's medium. Medium, lo medium low, not medium. Okay, so I'm making the small ones right now. The oh, first one is kind of lopsided, but like I said... These ones we're going to do, they're called atayi pasafi, and we're going to stuff them with ishta. Yeah, and we do the big ones with jibna, and this is this is Ali. Ali, mashallah. He's so curious. He's like, yeah. when is this going in my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> so so basically, this is a little this is a little twist you add? Yeah, she yeah. likes to add coconut to it. I like when the malak. Okay, atayi with a little... Coconut twist. Okay. okay, one one coconut uh, flakes. Yeah, the soft one. Nice, mm, my favorite. I'm actually gonna get really close and personal with you guys, so you can see. But hey, that's what we do on turning tables. We get this close is the first one. You can see what the bubbles personal. look like. This is the last one. When I'm running out of space, this is something that I learned to do. They they're already cooled, so they're they're not gonna get hard because. 
What I found is if you don't put the bubble side down and you let it air, they're gonna get hard. So they're already cool, so they're not gonna get hard, but I'm running out of space, I'll put the backs to each other. Because if mm. you put the faces, the bubbly side to each other, they'll stick together. But if you put no, the backs, they're, they're fine. Cold, they won't move. So yeah, I, for or some you, reason, I always have issues with it. Or you could do it this way too. Yeah, as long as you don't, you don't do want the bubbly sides facing each other. So mama says she does it with the back to the bubbly side to kind of like That's how I do it. Them. But you never want to face the two bubbly sides together because they'll stick. So there are different ways to cook your athayas. Obviously, we're going to stuff them all. And then once we stuff them, there's different ways to cook them. Some people deep fry them, like legit deep fry like you would fry chicken. We don't. I think it's too much oil. It's too much of a hassle. I don't like the flavor. Oh, but then you say, if you want to deep fry them, there is a process to it. You can't fry them right away. You have like to freeze them a little bit. Yeah. Then, no, if you fry them, especially with cheese, inside. Yeah, and yeah, I have yeah. another way to do them. It's between both ways. It's like a saute panel. Saute. Honestly, that's the best works. And the taste is really outrageous. It's the best taste I tried. I tried it. I, I bake them. Bake I'm them. lazy. I throw them in the oven. Oh, let's not have to think about this. <laughs> this is just like amazing. The <laughs> complex way to get the outrageously okay, so good regardless, regardless, you need semna. Yeah. You have to have semna because you need to coat them with semna so they don't stick. They is that ghee? Perfectly. Like you see, you have no issues. They yeah, stick. Ghee. Yeah, it is ghee. It's clarified butter. So over here, I have the atayfa right here. I'm actually going to start by pinching it a little bit to seal the seam. So kind of seal it a little bit, maybe a third of the way. That way I don't have anything like just falling out. Then I'm going to take my jib net, try to stuff it all the way down. So I want to make sure that it's all the way in there. And she ended up putting cinnamon in it. Like I said, my husband doesn't like it with cinnamon, so I just don't. Oh, he'll eat it. He'll still eat it. And then once it's stuffed, I'm just going to continue sealing it. And you know your atayif is good when it seals. It's stuck. It's perfect. I have learned, like I said, I want to make things easy for people. Mom is going to tell you, no, 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 but heck you fall, we don't freeze atayif. Oh, heck yeah, I freeze atayif. Makes my life easy. So if you want to freeze this, you have to coat it with the semna or the ghee first. Um, Ramadan is busy for a lot of people between fasting and working and taking care of your kids. Let's be real. At the end of the day, you're just done. So if you're going to make a batch and you're already taking the time to make it and you want to freeze it, all power to you. You're going to use it in Ramadan. Go for it. Nothing is going to happen. It's going to taste perfect. For the Atayif Asafiyat, you have to pinch them closed. So I'm going to show you a view here and I'm going to show you a view over there. So you're going to pinch them about halfway. And this they call them Asafiyat because it looks like the open mouth of a bird. So they're pinched halfway and then you're going to take your Ishta and you're gonna just put it into the top, just like this. Some people will dip them into pistachios. I don't like to dip them unless we're eating them. Usually what I'll do is I'll put them, like I'll just line them up like this, stick them in the refrigerator, and before we're gonna eat, sprinkle pistachios because certain, um, nuts like pistachios get kind of stale if you sprinkle That's them. Really I don't yeah. like that. Okay, so I have the atayif here. I'm just gonna coat it with a little bit of semna, not too much. I have the oven preheated to 450. So I'm going to throw these in the oven. I'm going to coat the rest of these with semna and we're going to put the jibna separate from the jaws. And for so me, I don't do it on the baking, on the lower side more. Which one? On the middle rack? I do it on the upper because- Yeah, so they can brown a little bit. You can. Yeah. They will cook and crunch because at the same time. they cook time. pretty quickly, by the way. They don't take longer than 10 minutes. She, like the other day I was making salata. She wanted me to cut the tips off the cherry tomatoes. I'm like, mama, who does that? I- <laughs> It doesn't look sense. So I'm like, I'm not about that. That's too extra for me. Per perfection is really a brand for yeah, Palestinian women. Okay, so this one, that is good. That is good. I will have fat. Let's see. Yeah, that's really good. Keep it more good. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. So painful that I can't taste it. So good. It's too hot. Mashallah, it looks so perfect. Yeah, it, it's honestly amazing. So. <laughs> This it's so good. I can, I can, I'll just imagine. Shu, what's mama's uh, judgment? How does it taste? Nah, I help with it. Are you kidding? Okay, me? I'll come change him right now. <laughs> what if you said <laughs> bad? No, she does really good. Yeah. 
Okay. I'm so proud of her. Okay. So let's Open it up. Mmm. Look at that cheese pull. Look at that cheese pull. Pre-made ishla that we use. Um, they look so much better with homemade, and then you can sprinkle pistachios. They still taste amazing. Um, just put some syrup on them. Tastes really good. We make these ahead of time. Wrap them up, stick them in the fridge, and also stuff them with Nutella. So your options are endless. People who are very busy with work outside of the home or inside of the home, and just these days with Corona, you were very like. Uh, aware of how little time people have or want to make sometimes for cooking. I'm just curious for you, you have kids, you have Adi, he's six. What is like as a Palestinian, obviously your identity as a mom, as a cook, it's all tied by this, you know, Palestinian identity as part of other identities. So for you, kind of what does cooking mean for you? And especially when you're making these Palestinian dishes. I mean, I don't know if you grew up in Palestine. Obviously, we inherited the culture and the taste and the smell and the rituals so, from our mother. For me, it's all about making memories with my family. So growing up, the most memories that I have with my mom is in the kitchen. That's the most. With my grandmothers and my mom. Both my grandmas, like I said, passed away this past year at Leila Hamon. My yeah. mom's mom used to love cooking. She had 14 kids. Um, and their times were not easy like our times, you know, they, they had to cook, they had to make do with what they had and they had to make things quickly. I don't, I'm barely keeping up running after three kids. This is, I feel like the culture that we get here because I've only been to Palestine a few times. My mom has only been a few times. My dad was raised there, but this is like, I feel like keeping this culture, like mama always used to tell us when she taught us how to be when we were younger, that when you get older, you're gonna thank me for this. And she's right, because if it wasn't for this, like I already see like this generation, and I'm just like, oh my God, if we don't keep these things embedded into them, like, what are we going to do later? Like this culture that we have through our food, through the language, everything, they're probably going to go back home less than we did. So I, I feel like it's all the memories and the culture that you get to hold on to as hard as you can. I'm so glad you, you framed it like that because, you know, I wanted to thank you for letting us into your home and into your kitchen, but also for keeping it so real in a very like... I mean, real everyday life. Like, let's... Yeah. Let's no, for... Our everyday life. Like, yeah, but it's, but it's so also weird. just like so obvious how you live your life is about, you know, passing on these, these sort of twists and, and, and recipes. And I think so many of us who are, you know, children of Palestinian parents who have struggled so much or in their own way struggled with identity. So many of us can relate to what you're saying where we want to like replicate or we want to know how to make them. And maybe we just didn't pay attention when they were teaching us. So you are serving a great purpose. And what are you most proud of, Nood, when it comes to your mother? Oh. For her, for holding on to everything that she taught us. Because honestly, while he growing up, we used to fight her for so many things. Whether it was talking how to be in the house, whether it was her, she put so much right. I don't think you appreciate your mom until you have kids. You don't appreciate your mom until you have kids. And you can share this experience with your kids so when they grow up, they can listen. Yep. So make mom's a type at home. Make mom's a type at home. Thank you, ladies.